All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kettabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the BFR mod, which is being made by form user Alison Tarr. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is that oh so gigantic of rocket designs from SpaceX, the BFR, which is pretty awesome, and surprisingly, we haven't looked at a BFR mod yet. There's been uh, actually quite a few that have been released, and long ago we looked at the ITS, which was the original bigger design before SpaceX decided to scale things down a bit, and I apparently just never thought about it after that. So when one came onto the forums recently, I had to check it out. Now let's uh, jump in here and grab well a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison, considering well this is the BFR, it's big. And then yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need to zoom out for this thing, and then of course go to our janitor's closet mod filter, just leaving on the BFR parts. And we'll start here in the command pod section by having a look at the big effing spacecraft which is the command pod here for uh, the BFR which is beautiful and gigantic you know just just a tad bit bigger than the mark 1-3 just, just by a just by a bit a bit but uh, yes a very cool looking thing here with a lot of fun functions though interestingly for this version um, not a whole lot of crew capacity, only three, which you'd expect a bit more from a BFR, but eh, I can live with it. Now, uh, as for the three, capacity does of course require one minimum crew member to operate, but does have a built-in ablator, of course, a data transmitter, a built-in docking node, like the typical curb net access, it is a lifting surface, has some built-in lights, RCS, reaction wheel, SAS, ablator, which I already mentioned, electric charge, liquid fuel, quite a bit at 11,000, monopropellant, and oxidizer. And all in all, it's a pretty nice thing. Besides the oddly low capacity of people, overall a very, very fun version of the BFR with some interesting features. For instance, we have a multitude of ways to get our Kerbals in and out of this thing, limited in however many it can carry. Uh, of course, we can always open the IVA door, which opens up this little hatch right here, and also does deploy a very long ladder so you can, you know, land this thing on the surface of a planet and get on and off. So there we go, we do have that there. Now we also have the payload door right here, which if we open up also has two usable hatches for us to move some Kerbals around and go and do things inside here, which is pretty cool. Now besides that, we have the uh, landing legs down here, which is nice to have for landings, and also an interesting a bit here, the uh, docking port on the rear end, so that two BFRs can dock rear end to rear end, and uh, the actual docking part is this uh, gray pipe here, which if we go close the docking port there, you can see move up and down, and same thing on the other side here, which is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, those are the various interesting features for this thing, but this is of course only one of two BFR designs we have access to. The other, if we chuck this baby back here, is the big effing spacecraft cargo variant, which if we go and pop on here is more or less the same thing, but without any windows. And this one is an unmanned command pod, of course, still with the built-in ablator, data transmitter, docking node, the lifting surface RCS, reaction wheel, SAS, the electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. It just, you know, holds no, no Kerbals, also, of course, doesn't have that uh, IVA door that we, or EVA door rather, that we had over here, nor that payload door right here. What we have instead is big payload. There we go, nice little mouth to open up and gobble up anything you wish to transport into space. So very nice there, and of course we also do have that same docking bit down at the bottom there for you to use. All in all, a very nice variant and uh, 
pretty cool looking, pretty cool looking. Though I am gonna actually pop back on this one as we have some parts that specifically go with this. And in fact, we'll open up the payload to prepare for that down the road. And I probably actually should point out uh, in the payload area, there are two attachment points right there, one in the hatch and one just above it. And then of course, we also have a number of attachment nodes at the bottom for all of our various engines. Now let's uh, actually move on to fuel tanks here where we've got two things. Uh, the first is the big effing RCS, which is just a big RCS block engine. Why it's in fuel tanks, I don't know, but that's where it is. And we get this lovely little RCS fuel block with it. Now, our, or not fuel block, but RCS engine block there. Now let's move up, and the second thing that we have here is the big effing rocket, which is, well, the, the rocket to launch this thing into space with. And it's beautiful and massive with a whole lot of attachment points at the bottom to throw on all of your engines. Now as for the stats on this thing, it is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter, curb net access, reaction wheel, SAS, an ablator again there, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer, all for you to enjoy. A nice, beautiful thing. It's pretty cool. So let's actually chuck that off and drag this back down so uh, we have things a bit more easy to see here and head down to engines where if we kind of zoom in down here we can take a look at our two versions of the Raptor engine here the first one being there we go just pop that there the smaller of the versions eh, let's put it there instead there we go and this one will produce a maximum of 735 kilonewtons in vacuum with an ISP of 263 using liquid fuel and oxidizer plus of course some vectoring of 5.8 degrees for your usage always good and then we have a larger Raptor engine with a maximum thrust of 770 kilonewtons with an ISP of 425 again using liquid fuel and oxidizer but this time only with about a 3 degree gimbling range so not quite as much control but nonetheless still good and of course slots in quite nicely into those bits of the BFR the Raptor or the smaller Raptor of course going on this interior bit and then of course on the uh you know, nice large rocket section. Now next in command and control, nothing. Structural, we have one thing. The big effing rocket decoupler, which of course goes between BFR and the main rocket bit and is uh, interesting. Now it does work. It does function, but if you don't have uh, one of the mods out there to sort of, you know, uh, increase the strength of decouplers, it doesn't work out very well. It tends to act almost like a hinge in my experience so far between the rocket and the BFR and the BFR starts to tilt to one side and the whole thing goes wibbly wobbly. But if you do actually add a couple of struts between the BFR and this decoupler, it seems to fix that issue or, you know, use the mod to make decoupler stronger one of the two whichever you choose to go with now next we have in coupling a bit that goes into this payload area so if you don't actually plan on taking up a payload you can always pop in the bfs docking port which is a docking node that goes in here and there we are provides you with a large docking port that you can extend to then dock with either a space station or of course another BFR in orbit whatever you so desire plus it adds very cool looking tube between the two sections all in all a pretty nice part and well you still do have that other attachment point there I guess if you do want to add a uh, little bit else of payload which is always good now in payload nothing aerodynamics we got a couple of things here one of course being the big effing grid fin for your uh, bottom stage rocket there we go, we can always deploy that, and you have a beautiful grid fin. Now we also do have two Evalons here, which uh, go on this a bit over here for the BFR. We have the right one, 
which pops there, and of course the left one, which pops there. Left and right, of course, being defined from this side, but hey, it's easier to see from over here, giving you a bit of control. Now in ground, we got nothing. Thermal, we got nothing. Electrical, though, we do have the BFS solar panel here, which we can always extend, giving us that uh, classic sort of fish shape fin solar panel yeah i got i took a lot of flack in the its video because uh, that i made ages ago because i didn't like the look of it gotta admit i still really don't but hey if you like it more power to you that's 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 all your opinion there uh next in communication nothing science nothing utility nothing which means we are uh, done with all the parts here so let's go and take a look at actually launching this thing now let's not save and bring up my bfr here that i built earlier and like i said on the decoupler for this thing if you add just a couple of struts here, it seems to fix the wibbly wobbly issue, uh, but otherwise it is going to go a little bit wonky. So let's go and launch, just take a quick look at this, and then we'll take a look at one I already put into orbit earlier. So this will just be a quick little flight just to show off of the engines and the launch capabilities of this thing. Now let's, uh, of course, turn on SES, remember to actually move those down there so we actually release throttle up and fire in three two one lift off there we go and we have oh boy all of those raptor engines going off down there and it's beautiful producing quite a bit of noise quite a bit of flame and well quite a bit of thrust now you can very easily get into orbit with this section but i am gonna cut it oh, wrong thing cut it here just so we have a shorter flight and stage and ignite the second stage here where we actually have the primary bfr engines with the larger raptor and of course also showing off of the control with our uh you know lifting surface and control bits down here and all good and nice and a lovely bfr that can actually fly pretty well now i haven't actually tried to put this thing into orbit under its own power but and i don't think it would work but you could get pretty darn close so launching this thing from the surface of duna would be very simple i think uh, i haven't actually tested that yet but all in all considering how much thrust this thing does have I think you might you should be able to pull it off pretty nicely so that is well the bfr launching now let's actually go to orbit just to get up to one that's already there quickly where i have uh that one which we can fly and take a look at it out here with of course it's uh solar panels already extended the rcs blocks working and functioning there which of course i've got some of the uh, rcs blocks attached plus those built-in internal ones on the front and back and we do have that lovely payload door that we can open with our lovely little docking port we can extend to dock of course with another bfr or station or what have you all in all a pretty fun little thing i do enjoy it i mean come on it's another fun addition from spacex and just a cool part overall so if you'd like to take a look at this thing for yourself which i would definitely recommend you go and do you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual but that is going to be it for today's episode so i hope you all have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next but until that time thank you for watching and as always, have a good one. Now this thing's off to Duna. Later, folks.